Well, a very good evening and thank you for joining us on India Business. I am Ashmit Kumar and here are the headlines that we're tracking at this hour. Global stock markets attempt to rebound after a turbulent week as investors hope for an end to the banking crisis. First Citizens Bank agrees to buy the deposits and loans of bankrupt Silicon Valley Bank. The chairman of Saudi National Bank resigns just days after some of his comments may have aggravated the collapse of Credit Suisse. Top global CEOs, including Apple's Tim Cook, make a beeline to China for a key economic summit. Cook praises Apple's symbiotic relationship with China despite rising tensions between Beijing and Washington. The Supreme Court takes away banks' power to declare accounts as fraudulent unilaterally. The Apex Court rules that banks will have to give a hearing to the borrowers and provide reasons before declaring an account as fraud. Sun Pharma tells exchanges that a cybersecurity attack by a ransomware group resulted in the breach of certain file systems and theft of certain company and personal data. The company says it is expected to lose some revenue due to the attack, adds that it will incur the expenses for remediation. Unruly scenes in the Lok Sabha as papers are flung at the Speaker. Lawmakers from 17 opposition parties protest against the expulsion of Rahul Gandhi from Parliament. Trinamool MPs joined the protest, calling it a special mark of solidarity. Indian skincare brand Mama Earth's co-founder Varun Alag tells CNBC TV18 that reports of the company withdrawing its IPO are baseless, says that the DRHP should be approved by next month. Iconic houseware brand Cello is coming, is looking at raising 2,000 crore via an IPO. Former RBI Governor Y.V. Reddy is happy with the way RBI has cleansed up banks, but he is not happy that over 90% of the bad loans are getting written off. On the current banking crisis, Reddy says that ideal banking system would be one where 30% comprises of the public sector banks. Israel's government plunges into chaos. Mass protests across judicial reforms intensify after Prime Minister Netanyahu sacked his defense minister for opposing the overhaul. Embassies are shut across the world, flights are grounded and ports are not operational as Israel's largest trade union launches a general strike. Well, the top story tonight, stock markets around the world are attempting to rebound after a turbulent week after a slew of bank failures. The assets and loans of Silicon Valley Bank are being bought by its first rival company, First Citizens Bank. Now, under the SPB takeover deal, all 17 former SPB branches will open under the First Citizens brand. It has bought around $72 billion of SVB assets and loans at a discount of $16.5 billion. The FDIC will still hold about $90 billion of SVB's assets. Separately, the chairman of Saudi National Bank, Amar al Khuderi has resigned. This comes within days of his comments that SNB was unlikely to increase its stake in Credit Suisse. This at a time when the European lender battled a crisis of investor confidence that plunged its shares. He will be replaced by SNB's MD and Group CEO Mohammed Al Ghamdi. The bank in a statement said that Al Khuderi was stepping down due to personal reasons. Meanwhile, the International Monetary Fund's chief warned that risks to financial stability have increased and called for continued vigilance. This even as actions by advanced economies have calmed market stress. Well, speaking of the markets, here's a look at the Indian market here, the day's market action. Market failed to hold on uh, to the recovery after mid-caps underperformed the benchmark indices. Nifty and Sensex ended a quarter of a percent higher, while the Nifty Bank ended flat. The mid-cap index ended with cuts of about half a percent. The market capitalization of BSE companies slipped to its lowest level since July 15th. 2022. And well, in the currency market, the rupee ended the day at 82.39 against the greenback. A weak dollar and a positive trend in domestic equities helped the rupee gain some ground. As for the commodity market, oil prices have stabilized and gained some lost ground after investors assessed efforts by authorities to rein in concerns over the global banking crisis. Meanwhile, Russian President Vladimir Putin said that he planned to place tactical nuclear weapons in Belarus, which increased geopolitical tensions in Europe.
Apple's Tim Cook is among the top global CEOs in China for a key economic summit. Tim Cook praised Apple's symbiotic relationship with China at the China Development Forum. This is the first meeting of its kind since China relaxed its COVID norms. Yunus Yun is reporting from Beijing. Well, other CEOs. Well, that was Eunice Yoon in developments coming in from China. But back home in some courtroom action, a bench of the Supreme Court headed by none other than the Chief Justice himself has passed a hugely significant order for the banking sector that affects the rights of borrowers on one hand and the concerns of lenders against default. So what is the Supreme Court judgment all about and what does it mean for stakeholders? Well, at the heart of the issue is a 2016 circular issued by the RBI that armed banks to unilaterally declare accounts of willful defaulters as fraud. Supreme Court has taken away that unilateral power now, noting that it poses risks of arbitrary orders being passed by the bank. So what exactly has the Supreme Court held? Well, in short, the Supreme Court has upheld the Telangana High Court judgment. The Supreme Court held that borrowers must be issued a notice and should be allowed a hearing before being declared as fraud. The Supreme Court holds that banks can't be allowed to exercise their powers arbitrarily. The Supreme Court declared that principles of natural justice require that the affected party is given, at the very least, a hearing. But speaking of the reasons, what are the Supreme Court's reasons behind stripping banks of this unilateral power? Well, for one, the Supreme Court held that declaration of fraud by the bank has serious consequences, both penal as well as civil. Now, penal because the bank is required to file an FIR post the declaration of an account as fraud and civil consequences because the declaration of fraud works like a blacklisting mechanism that bars the borrowers from accessing credit. The Supreme Court has also made an addition to the RBI's 2016 circular. The Supreme Court has now directed that banks will be required to record in their orders the reasons for declaring a particular borrower as fraudulent. The Supreme Court has hoped that recording of the reasons in the order will ensure that the banks don't exercise this power arbitrarily. Now, this should come as a setback to the RBI as well as the banking system. The central bank had argued that uh, the length of this internal mechanism was required to act as an early warning system to alert uh, the other banks to risks posed by certain defaulters. Uh, right now, the bankers were uh, discussing it with the borrower. They were giving it an, a scope to present their case into the consortium. Uh, their books were uh, audited by a, a special agency, uh, which was called which is the a forensic auditor. So they were they are aware that bankers have appreciation and and the, they are given the opportunity to explain it. Where the difference is now, the bankers will have to document it properly. Like once they have identified all these things, they will give a notice. Okay, uh, this, these are the transactions which have been found as a suspicious transaction, and based on the reply given by the borrower, they can document it. The reasons for difference from the uh, reply given by the borrower, and then they can final, pass a final order also. Well, Sun Pharma has informed stock exchanges that a cybersecurity attack by a ransomware group resulted in the breach of certain file systems and theft of certain company and personal data. Now, the company said it is expected to lose some revenue due to the attack. Ekta Batra now joins us uh, with more details. Ekta, tell us uh, more about this attack and what the impact could be on Sun Pharma. Further to their intimation earlier this month, Sun Pharma has informed the exchanges that the recent IT security incident that took place at Sun Pharma's premises was caused by a ransomware group that has claimed responsibility for the attack. The attack resulted in breach of certain file systems and theft of certain company and personal data. The attack, the company has said, impacted their business operations and is expected to reduce revenue in some of their businesses. Sun will also incur expenses for remediation efforts. While Sun has not named the ransomware group that is responsible for the IT attack, multiple unverified reports have named Black Cat, also known as ALPHV, as the group involved in the breach. The ransomware group started operations in November of 2021 and is known to target healthcare and public health sector as per a US government report. There are also many unanswered questions such as what type and amount of data was stolen, how the issue was resolved with the ransomware group, whether it was resolved permanently and whether there was a police complaint filed or not. 
We reached out to Sun Pharma. They do not have a comment on the same. The street, however, is not worried about the incident affecting the company's ability to achieve their targets for FY23, which they have guided for as high single-digit to low double-digit growth. However, one needs to watch for further updates from the company as they have indicated they are currently unable to determine potential adverse impacts of the incident, such as increased costs for protection against sec uh, further security incidents or possibility of litigation. Well, speaking of cyber attacks, Twitter said that parts of its source code were leaked online. Various excerpts uh, of the company's algorithms were posted by a user named Free Speech Enthusiast on GitHub, a Microsoft-owned platform. Uh, GitHub complied with Twitter's plea and disabled the content. Twitter has also asked the U.S. District Court of Northern California to identify the alleged infringer who posted the company's source code. Back home, beauty and skincare brand Mama Earth has denied reports that the company has shelved its IPO plans. Speaking exclusively to CNBC TV 18, company CEO and co-founder Varun Alag has said that the reports of the company withdrawing from the IPO process are baseless and unfounded, adding that he expects SEBI approval on the DRHP by next month. Queries is a standard part of the regulator's process. They want to make sure uh, that enough uh, clarification, uh, risk assessment is being added to DRHP so that consumers can make the right decisions right? and retail investors can make the right decisions. Right? I think they have uh, uh, they have shared their queries. We have already responded to all of the queries. We first start focusing on getting this approval our way right? uh, and post that we want to get together with our syndicate right? and have a conversation around what is the best timing to file RHP. Well, speaking of the primary markets, iconic houseware brand Cello World is looking at raising about 2,000 crore rupees via an initial public offering. The planned IPO is likely to be a mix of fresh and offer for sale. The company is likely to file its papers with SEBI by August. Yash Jen is joining us now with more details. Yash. Well, it's been really long since we spoke about the primary market action or the IPO market action. And we're sort of restarting that today. And what a company to really restart that with... Uh, a Cello World is the company that we're speaking about. Our sources have told CNBC TV 18 is that Cello World is looking uh, to launch its IPO. The intention would be to raise approximately about 2,000 crore rupees. Sources tell CNBC TV 18 that the IPO could be a combination of fresh issue through which some funds will come into the company, which is expected to be used towards uh, strengthening the distribution network. Also, there's an offer for sale element into it, which means existing shareholders would also look to sell partial stake belonging to them. As far as the process itself is concerned, we've been given to understand that Cello World has already started engaging with the bankers. In fact, IIFL, ICICI Securities, as well as JM Financial have been appointed to lead the IPO process. Uh, as far as the timeline is concerned, sources tell us that the company would look uh, to file its DRHP with market regulated SEBI sometime by August of this year and eventually launch uh, its IPO by the end of current calendar year. As far as the, the kind of businesses are concerned, it's a long list where the company is present today, uh, starting from home essentials uh, like drinkware, lunch boxes, cookware, dinnerware, to sort of coming to bathroom accessories, uh, air purifiers, vegetable and fruit washer, UV sanitizers. Also, the company is present in uh, the basic uh, entry level furnitures also. Uh, there are listed companies which are sort of involved in businesses which are bits and pieces of what Cello does but having all these different kinds of businesses under one company will be an interesting IPO to watch out for. Right, Yash, thanks a lot for that. Now, SoftBank backed uh, Oyo Hotels has planned to reduce the shares it aims to sell through an initial public offering. According to a report by Bloomberg, the company is looking to reduce its shares by around two-thirds citing a dip in tech valuations as the main reason. The report also highlighted that the company is looking to file a fresh IPO document as soon as this week. Meanwhile, the board of HDFC has approved the issuance of redeemable non-convertible debentures in various tranches to raise 57,000 crore rupees. The board also approved the company's overall borrowing powers to 6.5 lakh crore rupees from 6 lakh crores. The company said that it may need uh, to additional borrowing till the effective date of merger.
Well, with that, it's time now to slip into a very short break. But coming up, mass protests in Israel over judicial reforms intensify after Prime Minister Netanyahu sacked his defense minister for opposing the overhaul. More details when we come back. Welcome back. Now, the Finance Ministry has issued an advisory for public sector banks on the back of prevailing global financial stress. The government has emphasized on a closer look at business models to identify stress points, among other things. The Finance Ministry has asked PSU banks to frame detailed crisis management strategies as well. I'm happy with the way the RBI has cleaned up banks, but not happy that over 90% of the bad loans are getting written off. That's the word coming in from former RBI Governor Y.V. Reddy. Speaking to Lata Venkatesh, Reddy said that no other country has bankruptcy processes seeing such low 5% realization of value. He further said that his ideal banking system would be where 30% of the system comprises of public sector banks. Take a look. I'm quite happy with the cleaning up of the RBI banks. The Das and his company have done, the Raghuram Rajan and DAS, etc. I, I think I'm quite comfortable with the overall framework. See, I don't think in other countries the bankruptcy process results in realization of 5% of the value. Nah? I don't know the statistics have been out of touch. But if I were in the Reserve Bank, the first thing I will do is I'll collect information about the realization in all countries, or at least important countries, find out what is the realization and why. Are we below or are we above? That will give me a comfort in regard to the working of the legislation. Otherwise not. And how quickly we do that? How quickly and how, how much? Well, here's the big national story now. The Rajya Sabha passed and uh, returned the finance bill to Lok Sabha amidst uh, sloganeering from the opposition leaders over the Adani issue and disqualification of Rahul Gandhi as Member of Parliament. Congress MPs appeared in black in Parliament, while 16 other parties, including Trinamool Congress, also joined their protest. Party President Malikarjun Kharge and Priyanka Gandhi Vadra have accused the BJP of trying to silence a martyr's son. OBC MPs of BJP also held protests, demanding an apology from Rahul Gandhi over his Modi surname remark. The Housing Committee of Lok Sabha has asked Rahul Gandhi to vacate the official bungalow allotted to him by April 22nd. Today, <laughs> को बताने के लिए नहीं हम यह दिखाना चाहते हैं कि इस देश में डेमोक्रेसी को मोदी जी एक एक करके खत्म कर रहे कोई यह कहे कि हसन भ्रष्ट है तो पूरी हसन कम्युनिटी हो गई क्या बदनाम मोदी जिनका नाम था उनको क्या यह तो एक फेस सेविंग वाली बातें हैं ना ओबीसी को भी मालूम है वो भी यही कह रहे हैं कि गलत हो रहा है राहुल गांधी ने किसी का अपमान नहीं करा और जहां तक सवाल इस बात का है कि उनको सेक कर दिया गया वो मैंने आपको बता ही दिया कि इतनी जल्दबाजी में नहीं होना चाहिए अहंकार इतना ज्यादा राहुल गांधी जी का है कि वो पिछड़े समाज से माफी तो नहीं मांगी कोर्ट में भी माफी नहीं मांगी कोर्ट का जब आदेश आ गया तो उसको भी मानने के लिए तैयार नहीं है जिस समय आदेश आया उसी समय से उनकी मेंबरशिप चले गई सदस्यता चले गई अब ये नोटंकी किसके लिए है Well, here's the big international story. Protest against Israel's government's judicial overhaul plans intensified after Prime Minister Netanyahu sacked his defense minister for speaking out against the reforms. The overhaul would give the Israeli parliament and therefore the parties more control over the judiciary, among other issues. Netanyahu has been under intense pressure from his far-right allies to pass the reforms. These judicial reforms have ignited backlash from pro-democracy activists since January. Now... Hundreds of thousands of people are out on the streets, seen holding Israeli flags, flocking to the highway in Tel Aviv, setting bonfires in along multi-lane roads, and also sloganeering outside Netanyahu's house in Jerusalem. Israel's embassies, consulates, have also been shot across the world after a strike called by Israel's largest labor union. Flights, meanwhile, are grounded at Israel's Tel Aviv International Airport, affecting tens of thousands of passengers. Several schools and malls have also been shot. The health and medical services sector have also joined this protest. Well, Germany, meanwhile, sees its largest strike in decades. Buses, trains and airplanes have come to a grinding halt as a result of a one-day strike called by a trade union and a rail and transport union. 
The unions are seeking higher wages to cope with the rising inflation and cost of living. And well, on to the latest in the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Ukraine's eastern region, Bakhmut, continued to witness attacks today. The Ukrainian general staff has said that the country has repelled 85 attacks over the last 24 hours on the eastern front of the country. Meanwhile, Russian forces have claimed that three people were wounded in drone strikes in the southern region. And latest on India's COVID situation, India has reported over 1,800 new COVID cases for the second consecutive day, taking the active cases tally to over 10,000. This is the highest spike in daily cases in the last five months. Amid rising cases, Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan is holding a virtual review meeting with state health secretaries to assess the COVID-19 preparedness. Telangana's ruling party leader, Kavita Kalva Kuntala, has moved the Supreme Court against summons issued by the Enforcement Directorate in connection with the Delhi excise policy case. This after Kavita was questioned for around 10 hours by the ED. Garbage heaps at Kochi's Brampuram waste treatment plant caught fire again yesterday, less than a 12 days after major fire was doused. As per preliminary reports of the incident, the fire is assumed to be caused by smoldering. District officials have claimed that the fire is under control. However, concerns over the smoke emanating from garbage heap persist. Well, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of India Business R. Thank you so much for watching. News and updates continue right here on CNBC TV 18.